son. Where'd you find this? Later. You are now listening to Podcast 42, the world's most popular, inaccurate, and sometimes squirrel dray telling of pop culture history. This is the can come out of your pocket. <laughs> Do what? Do a, a podcast on Carl's Eye. The magic of Carl's Eye. <laughs> All right, well, on that note, <laughs> it's time for Podcast 42. I'm Christopher DeVos. I'm James Duncan. And I am Mark DeSenti. Welcome, Mark. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me. Oh, awesome. no problem. We've lost two. One is on the ship somewhere, sailing out to sea. The other one is dressed like a princess running around. You have to guess which one. <laughs> um, the coal is dressed like a princess. Wrong. J.O. is dressed like a princess running around. I knew that answer. I know. I just want to make sure that we all know. True fashion to him. I came yes. prepared with a shirt about our topic. I know this is right. great. We have a we have a topic related shirt again. It's going to be a wonderful one that is kind of filling in jail shoes. This is your pick. What did you pick? I chose something that's very very prominent in my life. The problems that I've had all my life buying shoes. Big feet. Oh wait, big foot. Yes, that creature. Okay, because that could have gone that you're very hairy. You realize <laughs> that, right? <laughs> Yeah, but, I could second that one with me. So, <laughs> so as we're going to talk about Bigfoot, I think one thing is important first off, though. What's that? We have to drink some beer. All right, let's open up the beer cooler. JL Beer Cooler. It's cooler than you think. JL Beer Cooler. It's cool enough to drink. It's cool enough to drink. Yeah. And in JL's honor, I bought beer this week. But I went all the way to France for this beer. I have brought in Cronenberg 1664 Blanc. It is the white beer from their line. Uh, very old, popular French beer. Uh, white lager. I don't really have much to say apart from it, apart from I've had this before, so it's kind of a cheat on my one, but I was informed that we had to make sure the beer was not going to knock Mark off his ass, so. Well, Mark's not a big beer drinker. Not a big beer drinker at all. I'm not a big beer drinker either. No. But Chris has developed in the past year from no longer spitting uh, his beer out and thrown up to actually maybe now ordering beer. Yeah, after a year of having to try a new beer every uh, week, I'm actually, like, got a little more taste buds. Now I'm not going to go and buy beer and drink it at home, Mm -hmm. but I do enjoy it a little bit more. But what's really funny is you you called me and you said, have we done Cronenberg before? And the only thing that could, that was running through my mind was Cronenberg, the movie director, who did, like, The Fly and all that. So we did. We did someone called Cronenberg, but we've never talked about their beer. Although I'm sure me and Jay have mentioned their beers before, because this is one of our favorite whites. So oh, I just, I just. Well, this is uncharted territory for me. So exactly, I'm, but is, also is, <laughs> I have to say it comes in a neon blue bottle, which makes yeah. it stand out more yeah. than that. Great uh, flower vase. Afterwards. <laughs> yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> you can take it home. You can be your souvenir from Podcast Forty Two. Yes, now you come guest host. We give you a prize. Very decorative. <laughs> mm-hmm. You should put flowers in and bring it home to the I'm, wife. I'm thinking it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. yeah, and then she'll be like, "What did you do?" Yeah, what did exactly. you do wrong? Exactly. Isn't that that's always the case? <laughs> All right. Well, let's get into it. I'm kind of excited. All right. So Bigfoot it is one of the most sighted creatures of all times. Over three thousand three hundred sightings have been recorded in the United States. Do they tell you where in the United States? Or um, you'll find out. Just general oh, man. You'll I'm so out. excited already. He does have regions. Regions of feet. He does. Yeah, he where does. he likes to stick around. There's regions, and then there's other regions where there's Bigfoot type people, but they have different <laughs> names. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, it is. Probably the most famous of all the crypts. A crypt is a creature who is extinct. Oh, sorry, his existence is questionable, such as Bigfoot, the one from my homeland, the Loch Ness Monster, the Chupacabras, and Carrot Top. Now, I think the nerds are going to correct you on this, and it's cryptid. Cryptin? 
cryptid. So it's cryptid. Is big oh. Bigfoot a comedian? Yes. No, <laughs> I just. So, I, I'd like to throw little things in the. The question is, have you ever seen carrots up in the way in life? I was like, not like, just in the white. Could be. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, like, we're looking for the original skinny guy, not the one that's on steroids. Okay. So yeah, find <laughs> gotcha, him, okay. you're good. <laughs> I try to see if James and the listener is actually listening. Ah, I so gotcha. You'll, you'll see a little okay. here and there. There'll be um, weird things. <laughs> so, but you know, out of all of the ones above, apart from carrots up. Bigfoot is the most plausible and convincible. Bigfoot is a large man ape like creature whose skin ranges from deep black to charcoal, dark brown, or reddish gray. Uh, the palms of his hands and soles of his feet are much lighter, and the average height is about seven foot ten. So that's about a foot and a half taller than me. And weight of the Bigfoot is estimated to be a thousand pounds, which is about you know ten pounds heavier than me. Uh, they are considered orderly creatures and can be found st- uh, stacking rocks neatly. <laughs> yes, because they have OCD. <laughs> <laughs> OCD. Uh-huh, yeah. Yes, uh, mm-hmm. I've, everything's got to be perfect. Yes, and have uh, legendary strength. Obviously, if they can stack them neatly, they've got to put them like yes. Uh, but not only is their strength legendary, they take pleasure in using their strength, like me. <laughs> uh, Bigfoot is believed to smell really bad due to the secretions caught in the folds of its skin. Like me. Oh, wait. <laughs> That's not right. There are estimates of anywhere between 2,000 to 4,000 of these creatures roaming North America. According to anthropologist David Dingling, Dangling, <laughs> I'm dangling, but I'm not Dingling, a Dingling. <laughs> of the University of Florida, the legends existed before there was a single name for the creature. However, they do differ regionally. Bigfoot has been said to be seen on every continent except Antarctica. According to the Appalachian Investigators of Mysterious Sightings, there are more than 12 different types of Bigfoot inhabiting Appalachia, ranging from the more human-looking grass man to the vicious 8-foot-tall Midnight Whistler. They both sound like wrestlers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 The grass man versus the midnight wrestler. <laughs> Who will win? <laughs> it's obviously the midnight whistler. This, yeah, definitely. This one's bad. <laughs> Although the midnight whistler could also be one of those creepy guys looking through your window, like a peeping Tom, the yeah. midnight whistler. That's the, the... What I would just not understand is he stacks rocks. So yeah. Would yeah. he be good at Jenga? No. Well, he, that's the opposite, opposite yes. of stacking rocks. You're going to hire him to stack your Jenga up. If yeah, you want a Bigfoot size Jenga, we're going to do that in the wild and just see I, it. I'm just saying, I think he would be pretty good. Maybe <laughs> they, we're working it all out. Maybe Jenga, maybe Jenga, sorry, maybe Bigfoot was responsible for building stuff in history, like pyramids. Uh, no. no. Uh, Stonehenge. Sorry. Yeah, but yeah, that's a good there one. Stonehenge. Go. Bigfoot built Stonehenge. Stonehenge. Here, yes. we've worked it out on Podcast yes. 42. I like him. Well, I, I will say this because um, Jenga seems like a fun game, but it's not. It's not a fun game. You look at Jenga, and you're like, oh, let's play some Jenga. Then you get into Jenga, and you're like, I don't want to play this game. No, it's... I played a really fun version of Jenga though in a Jenga bar in England. A where, Jenga bar, yeah. And then you go, and you—it's kind of like an inflatable Jenga where you have they stack it up, and you have to play as a team, and each thing's about six foot long. So two of you have to take it out of time, and when it crashes down, you get hit by like soft there, stuff. There must be like drinks spilled all over the place. Yeah, in that yeah. Bar. No things in the sippy cup. It was really expensive, but it was good fun. <laughs> it was like kind of like a good attempt at like an escape room. But it sounds like a Japanese game show. Yes. Yeah, but I like those too. Mm-hmm. I, I feel, I'm getting that feeling from that yeah. too. Yeah, a Jenga bar. I would not go into a Jenga bar. I'd be like, this Jenga bar sounds really fun. And then once I got in there, I'd be like, no, this isn't fun at all. <laughs> Just like playing Jenga. <laughs> Just like playing Jenga. <laughs> the Midnight Whistler is thought to be the first clan of Bigfoot to venture beyond the cave systems where they hid from humans. It is believed to have used the waterways to spread throughout Appalachia and evolve the Bigfoot we know and love today. The nocturnal creature weighs 400 pounds, has jet black fur, glowing green eyes, and communicates with loud whistle. That sounds like a steam engine. Oh, so or it could be a steam engine, because they do be. lay the railroad tracks through the woods sometimes. It could be. So it's either a Bigfoot or a steam engine. I don't know about the, <laughs> Big the green eyes, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll, see <if> it... <laughs> well, ecologist uh, Robert Pyle states that the, most cultures have accounts of human-like giants in their folk history. People feel that need to express in belief and belief in some larger than life creature. Some other names for Bigfoot have taken on has been a wild man, a Yowie, a Yeti, 
A clam eater? <laughs> <laughs> a curry shaker? Uh, Ibu Gugu? And, and old skunky Bill. We, I think we all have an old skunky Bill. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, there's no doubt, no doubt about that. Oh, good luck with this next sentence. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, uh, Chief Mich- Michelle <laughs> of the Nalaki Palmix and Alatin in British Columbia <laughs> named the creature. That was definitely not right, any of that. So, no. So, it's uh, spelled N L A K A apostrophe P A M U X. Yes. <laughs> in British Columbia, named the creature um, by a Salishan variant, meaning the benign face one. The most common evidence of, for Bigfoot is eyewitness reports. Unfortunately, there's also a weakest type of evidence. Psychologists <laughs> um, know that eyewitness testimony usually is unreliable and that people are simply not very good at accurately describing something they saw, especially under stress. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who, is, who can describe pretty much anything if you're under like a serious amount of stress anyway? Yeah. Um, or at a distance. And particularly that. We know that most of these people are super bad photographers, too. Yeah, I know. Get, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So it's like... That comes up later in the script, yeah. actually. <laughs> Does it really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and when the subject is partially hitting in the woods, most Bigfoot researchers admit that the vast majority of sightings are mistakes or hoaxes. Some uh, Somewhere up to 95%, by some estimates, still uh, believers contend that a Bigfoot must be hiding in that tiny portion of sightings. And reports that it can't easily be explained. If you want to be scared, go on YouTube and watch um, people who have stumbled upon Bigfoots. Um, like search for Bigfoot noises and you'll see these people uh, and they're all first person and they're shooting in the woods and they're walking along and all of a sudden you hear this wicked sound and you like my heart dropped. I was like scared to death. And I'm just sitting in my, you know, Underpants. dining room watching the video and I'm like, holy crap, I can't imagine myself out in the woods hearing this noise. So, but it's also good because, you know, this topic did come up from uh, me watching the History Channel reruns of the Bigfoot Hunters. Yeah. There's also yeah. a show called The Mountain Monsters, if you've yeah. ever seen that. No. Yeah. And this show is like, it's just a bunch of West Virginia, pretty much hillbillies. Running around. And they run around and they hunt, but they and again, all the names of what Bigfoot is, they, they they have the West Virginia one, they have, they go all around like the whole country. Yeah, you it's know like, what the Florida name is? What did I have no clue. Skunk Ape. Uh, skunk Ape? Yeah. Skunk Ape, they call yeah, it. Yeah, they call um, it the Skunk Ape here. Wow. Well, he sells the weed to people. Um, <laughs> skeptics of Big Hue. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's just Bob. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, skeptics of Bigfoot argue that these days almost everyone has a five megapixel HD camera in their pocket, which I agree with. But how many of those people know how to, you know, quickly turn it up and take a picture of Bigfoot? Maybe a teenager, a nine-year-old. Take a nine-year-old into yeah, well, like my yeah. Android. I can yeah. just I can program the buttons to well if you, to do the to go to the camera right so, away. Well, at this point now, with the if you have a new iPhone and you're out there, yeah, if you're shooting 12 megapixels, you should, you should have no problem getting a clip. Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, especially when it's self focused it's working yeah. everything. Yeah. <laughs> so, if Bigfoot actually existed, logically, the photographic evidence for them should improve over the years. Yet, this is not. <laughs> Bigfoot photos tend to still be blurry. Uh, sorry, still see, still tend to be blurry, ape-like blob when photographed. One theory is that there is a turn of page, a supernatural explanation. Bigfoot somehow emits special unknown light waves that cause creatures to, to always appear out of focus no matter how good the camera. Now, I do want Bigfoot to be real, but too. this explanation is really, we're really kind of pushing it. So it's like, I will, he, he moves his arms, so then he uh, generates some form of force field around him. No, it's just you can't you take you can't take a picture of him like a ghost. <laughs> a true ghost is just an orb yep. when you take a photograph of it. So Bigfoot is an orb giant orb. No, he just has special powers that make him blurry. Blurry foot. Well he's definitely I mean, at this point like the hide and seek champion. Yeah. yeah. So it's like <laughs> Yeah. Uh so the Bigfoot timeline. The very first accounts of Bigfoot date back to the fifteenth century. In some mountain region that I can't pronounce. Caucasus. Caucasus. Between Asia and Europe. Ah, oh, yes, that's where couscous comes from. That's where what comes from? Couscous. Couscous? Oh, I love I couscous. Yeah, that's from Morocco. 
I love cuckoos. I could eat cuckoos all day. <laughs> Members of the Lumni, a Native American tribe, tell the tale of Tiskasmiskwiskus. <laughs> Uh, it looks like Ewoks, but with a T in the front of it. <laughs> yeah, it's just Ewoks. It's e- Ewoks with a TS in front of it. It actually looks like a number eight. On I, <laughs> I believe I said it correctly because I've studied this language all my life. Uh, that's their local version of Bigfoot. This version is threatening and has a variant called the Stalyaha or Kiwi Kiwaha, which was nocturnal. Children were warned against saying their names, not that they could, or they'd be carried off and killed. In 1847, Paul Kane, who has a regular name, heard the stories by Native Americans about Skookums, a race of cannibalistic <laughs> wild men living on the peak of Mount St. Helens in southern Washington State, until it blew up. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. I think this was a I think this was a way to get your kids to stay at home. Yes. Yeah. So, of course. I think but that, that's exactly not it, to wander off. So what you just was, said was who took the kids and killed them though? It wasn't Bigfoot. Was it the parents going and killed their kids for saying their names? Well, I don't know. Exactly. So maybe just if you said the name we'd go and kill you no matter what. They would be carried off and killed. Well, this is back when children were allowed to play outside, so what's that what was that like? Maybe it was my generation that were the last ones. Yeah, it was wonderful. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I drank out of a water hose. Yeah, so it was. <laughs> it was <laughs> explains a lot. I didn't wear a seatbelt. <laughs> I didn't wear a seatbelt in the car in no, the front I seat. I didn't either. No, or a helmet on no. my bike. No, my yeah, that didn't happen either. And they made a special big wheel called the Green Machine. Yeah. You guys know the Green Machine? Green machine no. Is the shit with the handles. Yeah, this yeah, was made machines. to actually yeah. kill you. The Green Machine was made to kill you. Yeah, it's a it's a think of a a. A big wheel, but it's longer. Yeah. Okay. And Something instead like- of a steering wheel on the top, it had two shift handles on the side. On the side. And, and what you, you do is you got one way to the yeah. other one, and then you just spun in a circle. You got as the- much speed as you yeah. could get on this thing, and then you shifted this yeah. things really fast so that you spun around and flipped over. That sounds amazing. Basically, it was amazing. This is basically, how we drifted back in the car. Yeah. And if, it, if the pavement was wet, you were you it's were. You were done. That sounds amazing. Those were trips to the hospital. And probably yeah, was. multiple concussions that you never even knew you, you had at that time. I was the first kid to get a green machine, and I was the, the you bomb. You had the green machine. I was the bomb. It was, pretty, it was, it was really cool. <laughs> Think of everyone else having, like, uh, um, just a standard BMX. No. Think of everyone else having, like, a, uh, like a regular Toyota, and you had, like, uh, a race car. Oh, you were that cool. Yeah, yeah. That's 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 the equivalent. Everybody wanted to ride the big, the, the, yep. the green machine. No, you couldn't ride my green yeah, machine. You, okay. You'd break my green machine. Until one of the plastic tires just... Yeah. And, 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 so what did you <laughs> have, when have you... replacements for? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what did you break on the green machine? No, I didn't break any bones on it. Oh. No, it was awesome. Yeah. Uh, we weren't afraid of crashing our things at that time. No. What was it, I? I guess hospitals are cheaper. In 1840, <laughs> Reverend... Elkin Walker, a Protestant minis- uh, missionary, recorded stories of giants among the Native Americans living near Spokane, Washington. It was said that these giants lived on and around the peaks of nearby mountains and stole salmon from the local fishermen's nets. So bears? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Yeah. Did you? Uh, and then, oh, sorry. Sorry, it's all right. Sorry. I'm so into. <laughs> yeah, you're listening here. <laughs> you want to just listen to me talk? Yeah. <laughs> It's all right, because well, be surprised. It sometimes it doesn't put your right names on the script and then waits for you to make a mistake. <laughs> That's right. Then exactly. I laugh. All right. Well, in the 1920s, Agent J.W. Burns uh, compiled stories and published them in a series of Canadian newspaper articles. Send the guy from The Simpsons. Yes. I think so. Yeah. They were uh, accounts of a Sasquatch, which the people believed were real. The Sasquatch preferred to avoid white men. <laughs> <laughs> was he prejudiced? Yes. <laughs> yeah. like, okay. Because these were uh, Inuits. Okay. And he, Don't call them Eskimos. They were Inuits. And he spoke the Linuit language of the people at Port Douglas, British Columbia. These accounts were published again in 1940, where Burns borrowed the term Sasquatch from the Halomekalekalekamian. The halogen light. <laughs> Whatever it is. He said the name Bigfoot was first recorded by Americans in the late 19th century, Spotted Elk, who was also called Chief Bigfoot, was a well-known Lakota leader and was killed during the Wounded Knee Massacre in 1890. (laughs) (laughs) 
Oh, it hurt my knee. The wounded knee, it killed me. The wounded knee, it killed me. I scraped it. Well, not yeah. the green machine. I'm yeah. now, I'm now so so he was Chief Bigfoot, but he had a, but he was killed in wounded knee. Yes, so wounded knee was an area. Okay. <laughs> right. so. Named by the uh, Native Americans. <laughs> well, in the late 19th and, <laughs> and early 20th century, two enormous marauder and grizzly bears were widely noted in the press and each nicknamed Bigfoot. This probably inspired the most common name of the ape creature. So, the first grizzly bear, Bigfoot, was killed near Fresno, California in 19... Oh, sorry, 1895, because in 1985, that would have been a long time. He would have been alive for a long time. Yeah, he was a 200-year-old bear. Yeah. Yes. That would have been impressive. And he was killed because he killed uh, sheep for 15 years. So that's what he did. He walked around killing sheep. Yes. Okay. His weight was an estimated 2,000 pounds. Uh, the second one was an active in Idaho in the 1890s and, and 1900s between the Snake and Salmon Rivers. And, super, uh, <laughs> and supernatural powers were attributed to it, like the ability to fly and decode tax. In 50... <laughs> yeah, I just don't... What did you write here? Decode tax code? Yes. He, was, he had the ability to decode tax code. Yeah, he could fly. Yes. And he could do taxes really At well. At the same time? Okay. Yeah, if you needed that. Oh. That was like the original Wonder Woman. Uh, in 1958... Gerald Crew casts Bigfoot's prints near his, his bulldozer. However, in 2003, his son admitted it was a hoax and it was only meant to be a joke. Now, this his his casting of these Bigfoot feet were like uh, no one could disprove them until his Someone. stupid son <laughs> went, ah, <laughs> said, "Ah, it's just a joke." Hundred years later, I know. <laughs> I'd be so mad. 1967 brought us the famous Patterson-Gimlin video. This is the one where you see Bigfoot strolling through the forest, and it casually turns and looks at the camera as if to say, Hey, vlogging will not be invented for another 50 years. Stop that. Stop that assistant and get off my lawn. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, a, this is a tape that I think everybody's seen. Yeah, the where grainy the, footage, and yeah. he's out there, and he got, it, looks a it looks a little yeah, like a gorilla suit. Yeah. 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 So far, it's the only footage that has not been debunked. Has been scrutinized by scientist forensic examiners, yeah. forensic anthropologists, animators, CGI experts, and zoologists. Yet it still remains to be genuine. Roger Patterson became interested in Bigfoot after reading an article in 1959. He then wrote a book, and then him and his experienced outdoorsman friend Robert Gimlin went on horseback to hunt it in Bluff Creek, California. Bigfoot sightings were common there including construction workers making a newspaper when their Bigfoot print findings, with their Bigfoot print findings. That makes more sense. They didn't actually just make Bigfoot prints out of newspapers. No, that would be weird. They said, hey, look at my big feet. Ah, (laughs) newspapers. Aha! (laughs) This Bigfoot's made out of newspaper. (laughs) (laughs) Newspaper (laughs) J. I mean, it was the 20s. They were outside a lot more. Yeah, Yeah, true. Exactly. On October 20th, sometime in the afternoon, they spotted what they believed to be a female Bigfoot walking on the sandbar. Now, this uh, is the first time I ever heard, like, uh, uh, sex being assigned to Bigfoot, because that's what I always wondered. And this is going to be really weird, but you never see any Bigfoot boobs in photographs. (laughs) And you never see any Bigfoot penis in photographs. Are you you waiting for Bigfoot porn? Well, here's the thing. They got to they got to reproduce, right? Yes. So how do they do it? Because you never see any genitalia of any kind in anybody's photograph. They always forget to to take a picture of their dong. Well, I mean, yeah, because most of the <laughs> photographs are hoax, but if there's something naked running around in the wild, you're going to see its genitalia. Am I wrong? We have to get a clear picture of it. <laughs> maybe, so, maybe that's it. Maybe the genitalia is stopping the photos being taken. Maybe, but even in this video, did you know it was a female Bigfoot? No. No, because the boobs aren't <laughs> prominent. Yeah, and if they were, they were going to be furry. So you're not going to be but able even, to see them anyway. Even like a ape, you, would, you know it's a female or a male just by looking at the chest. You can see boobs. 
You can see ape boobs if you look at it. Yes. I've never looked at ape boobs. <laughs> you look at ape boobs? No, I'm not looking. The next thing I'm, I'm not looking for ape boobs. boobs. I mean, you're going to stare at the apes and be like, I'm, I'm looking at boobs. And thanks, Chris. That's a female. It's got boobs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And everyone's going to turn around and look yeah. at you and you go, thanks, Chris. Now I look like the psycho at the zoo. <laughs> yeah. as, he, as he throws his shit at me. <laughs> but even if you don't notice the boobs, you know, you'll see a ape penis if you look at that. Yes, but yeah, you know, usually they're laying on their back playing. With yeah, yeah. So it's like, but I don't, I don't, I really don't know if I've when I've gone there, I don't know if I've seen, a, really seen their boobs. Are they like, do they have real boobs like like we do? Or like well, yeah, they're hairy. Like, yeah, they got. But they have boobs. They don't have like. They got ape nipples. Like, no, yeah, they got teats. That's how they feed. They're young. So aren't those their boobs? But I mean, are they like a dog? Is what I'm trying to say. No, they're like boobs. I never looked at it. That's nope. That's really weird. Yeah. I'm going to have to take notices. I'm, yeah. ha- I'm definitely going to have to go to the fucking zoo now. <laughs> <laughs> just, just be, I, I'm here to see the ape boobs. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, we're going to ask you to leave straight away. <laughs> well, we're descendants of them, if if that's what you believe. I'm not saying yes. that's okay, wrong or right, but gonna, yeah. that, that's one theory. And they look like us, except they're super hairy. They have boobs. Okay. So it was... And they feed their yuck with their boobs. So could Adam and Eve be Bigfoot? No. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Chris says so. That's it. <laughs> no. Although there is mention of giants in the Bible, but there's no mention of Bigfoot in the Bible. Well, and, yet. and he was slain by a big stone. <laughs> so it's like... And they never really go into what, what animals... Like, they never go into what animals they made in the Bible. It was just, uh, we made these was, these animals. Could Goliath have been David and Goliath? Could he have been Bigfoot? No, he was a giant, though. They didn't describe him as hairy. They just described they just him as a giant. He was big. He was big. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and that's the end From of the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. From boobs to the measure and four Bigfoot. We're done. <laughs> Somebody turned it off. This. Did you know they were talking about <laughs> Bigfoot boobs on the show? <laughs> yes, Somebody's we listening in the car with their kid. They had to turn it off. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so they spotted the female Bigfoot. Then Patterson's horse reared at the sight of the creature, knocking him to the ground. He quickly got to his feet and grabbed his camera, capturing the famous footage. After Patterson's film reel ran out, Gimlet ran or tried to follow it on horseback, but it disappeared into the woods. Patterson and Gimlet tried to track the cre- uh, the creature, but eventually had to come back to the initial sighting. There, they made cast of the footprints. Most skeptics say it's a man in a gorilla suit. However, due to experts picking the film apart frame by frame, and they did, we are able to see the bottom of Bigfoot's foot. If this was a costume, according to some, it would have been very sophisticated and expensive. Why do you think the foot matters in this film? The skin on the bottom? I don't know. Yeah, just how the like the maybe. shape of the hair and the foot would have been just incredible to have to make. It would have been George yeah. Lucas' of style. Of yeah, it would have been, um, yeah, it would have been pretty... Uh, well, and especially for that time. Yeah, exactly. For that time period, it would have been it would have been yeah. very yeah. yeah. Costume experts say that the person would have had to have glued the hair directly onto their skin in order to pull off that amount of realism. Both Patterson and Gimlin have denied that this was a hoax, even up to Patterson's death in 1992. However, in 1998, in an interview with the BBC, Gimlin stated that looking back, he may have been tricked by Patterson. One theory about Bigfoot is that it's actually an alien. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so, one of many. It does not always go there, <laughs> no matter what we're talking about. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> Have a, you ever seen alien boobs? Oh, never mind. We'll, yeah, like, yeah. we'll do that on another show. <laughs> yes, there's three of those. <laughs> it was... <laughs> so, <laughs> so there have been UFO sightings and Bigfoot sightings all at the same time. I said... This is usually followed by cattle mutilation, <laughs> mutilations. Mm. Okay. It's, it's true. true. It's very true. It is. They said, uh, this Bigfoot is said to be mostly silent, but will make loud howling sounds at night as well as tree knocking and rock clacking. <laughs> <laughs> the Bigfoots with tree knocking and rock clacking. They do have a band. <laughs> That sounds like a fun night in the woods. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, and it said that Bigfoot also has uh, psychic powers. Present day witnesses have claimed to lose time after sighting the Bigfoot. Yeah, because you've shit your pants and passed exactly. out. It's, yeah. like, it's like, it's like yeah. pretty much, it's an hour's pass in the blink of an eye, and the victim is left unable to recall what happened to them. <laughs> and sometimes, 
Bigfoot just makes people strip naked and go crazy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. That's true, too. Right. It's in Appalachia. Uh, that happened to me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait. I, I didn't sight a Bigfoot. I was on meth. Never mind. <laughs> From uh, skunky, skunky, uh, skunky, uh, <laughs> skunky ape, the skunky ape, the skunky yep. ape guy. In, in Appalachia, chupacabras are referred to as West Virginia vampires. So now it's a damn vampire. Yes, geez. it's like, well, that's, that's, what they, like that's what they call them. That's what they call them. Yeah, okay. it's coming up as to why. Okay. Yeah, I said this is due to the local belief that they suck on the blood of woodland creatures. Yeah. There's just a nickname. So okay. they're, they're still Chupacabras. So they're still Chupacabras. Chupacabra Bigfoots. Okay. Vampire so the, aliens. Well, seeing as the Appalachians <laughs> of stuff, sorry, it's all in caps. <laughs> the Appalachian investigators of mysterious sightings believe that Bigfoot may use Chupacabras the same way hunters use dogs. With a Chupacabra catching the prey and the Bigfoots swooping in to retrieve the body in return. <laughs> Some form good. of like system here. Yeah, this yeah. is All like, right, this is good. Okay. So Bigfoot's Bigfoot's protect chupacabras from traps when curious monster hunters get loose. This would Close, be an awesome sorry. movie. Yes, this is. I uh, want to make this movie. This, this must, would be really cool. I'm telling you, the show Mountain Monsters is just yeah. But we need to have the Bigfoot. This is what it, controlling the chupacabras and fighting the mount the other the the hunters the hunters. Hmm, that'd be awesome. So it'd be like a Sharknado, but a Chupacabernado. Yeah, be Bigfoot, Bigfoot Ch- and Chupacabras versus Curious Monsters yeah. and Hunters. Versus Hot Carrot Water. Top. Yeah, very Carrot Top, yes. <clears throat> so Bigfoot has been audio recorded since 1972 with a large body of evidence ever growing. Here is an audio recording of Bigfoot from the Bigfoot hunter Robert Dodson. So that's scary. Yeah. yeah. That Bigfoot definitely <laughs> had like a Jurassic Park kind of feel. Yeah. I mean, it's like, and that know. was recorded at night. Yeah. yeah. And that would be terrifying. Being so outside. The, yeah. If you're in the middle of nowhere and then, you know, and if this thing does do rock clocking and tree knocking mm-hmm. and everything else, and, and you can start, and I've heard rumors of it throwing rocks. Oh, yeah. So, so and trees. Yeah. So if this thing launches a rock down there, you, what this scream. I'm sure you're out of there. I'm out of there. And then that wind, <laughs> you're out of there. you can hear the wind in the background, so you're going to be there, and you're already going to be like, yeah, yeah. that's intimidation. Yep. Bigfoot, you big bully. Uh, Bigfoot yeah. is thought to be able to run at 35 miles an hour. That's impressive. Uh, lack of Bigfoot skeletal remains is uh, attributed to the fact that most creatures bury the dead, just like humans do. Convenient. Uh, yeah. The book Bigfoot Big <laughs> Big Footprints, published in 1992 by veteran researcher Grover Clance, uh discusses in detail about alleged Bigfoot hair, feces, and skin scrapings and blood. Now, see, there's something else they don't talk about a lot: is Bigfoot poop. Bigfoot poop. What does it look like? Uh, a quote from the book: you, "The usual fate of these items is that they either received no scientific study, or else the documentation of that study is either lost or unobtainable. In most cases, where competent analysis has have been made, the material turned out to be bogus, or else no determination could be made." That's not real Bigfoot poop. No, and again, how do we know it's not the same as our poop? It could be. Well, yeah, but we would be, we'd be on a diet of salmon and berries. I'm sure they could tell. I mean, there's plenty of people out there to do that, Chris. And sheep. Yeah, and sheep. When you're done listening to this, here is something else you can sink your ear holes into. I was a fool to think that everything would change after I'd watched my stories each week. My soaps are over, and there's nothing left now. Nothing but the long, cold hours until they air again. I thought it would be a good thing to finally be rid of them, to have my life back. 
And yet, what a life. Such a lonely existence without them. Sitting in dark cafes, brooding over cold coffee, staring while the column of ash on my cigarette withers to oblivion. Waiting. Waiting. And then I found them. At last, the Soapy Madams podcast. They talk about British and American soap operas and soap opera tropes as well. It's a miracle. At last, I can feel 30 or 40 minutes of that cold, dark, silent time with the whimsical voices of the soapy madams. They have soap talk, guests, discussions of soaps from around the world, and games. Oh, so many games. You can find them on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or at soapymadams at podbean.com. Dare to dream. Dare to listen. Dare to soap yourself into a lather on the Soapy Madams podcast. <laughs> this is Chris Osborne from Play Comics, and you are listening to Podcast 42. Whenever a definite conclusion has been found throughout scientific analysis, the samples have turned out to be just ordinary sources. Found Bigfoot hair turns out to be elk, bear, or cow hair. Bigfoot blood has often been revealed to be transmission fluid. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. This is great. I found Bigfoot. Nope, just a leaky car. No, a leaky fine. car. The Bigfoot samples that have been put to DNA analysis that come back as unknown or identif- unidentified don't necessarily point it to being a Bigfoot. It could just mean that the DNA sample might have been contaminated or degraded by environment. It could also mean that the animal it came from was not among the reference samples that the laboratory used for comparison. With no reference sample of Bigfoot DNA to compare it to, so by definition there cannot be a conclusive match. Which to me is stupid because you're not going to have a sample no. of another Bigfoot so until you prove you, there's a Bigfoot. So what, what, I mean, and if you're in that environment, what do you compare it to? Right. I mean, you know, it's from that, from that, there's nothing. I mean, obviously if there's a Bigfoot in, in Oklahoma... Mm-hmm. I mean, you can't say that there's an ape there that you're going to put refer the, <laughs> the you know, to. right. So it's kind of a at some point you're going to need a patient zero. So yes, until we find Bigfoot, yeah, until we yeah. find of remains. Well, one of the TV shows will find him. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Genetics provides another reason to doubt that existence of Bigfoot. So there cannot be just one. There would have there have to be tens of thousands of them in order to keep. Their population going. Wouldn't it be more easily seen if there was ten or thousands of them? Well, yeah. Hence the need for boobs and penises. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> and we've gone back. Yeah, thanks to me. I'm yeah. well, that's... scarred now when I go to the zoo. I'm yeah. Like, yeah. I'm telling you. You laugh, but it's it's needed. I never thought of that. You brought it. See, now I learned something new today. <laughs> As if, there, if there were that many of them out there, at least one of the creatures would be killed by honor or hit by a motorist on the highway or even found dead by accident, disease, or old age by a hiker. Yet rarely anything's found. And yep. That's very true. I mean, they've never – they haven't found anything. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, once as a kid, I stumbled upon a dead cow in a creek. <laughs> so then I knew that cows were real. <laughs> <The cows fail. laughs> what is that thing down there? <laughs> it looks like a dead cow. Is that real? A cow is even real. Am I real? Where's his boobs? I got on my green machine and I rode away really quick. Uh, Paul Freeman, Morgan Freeman's brother, spent, <laughs> most, <I'm> just, <laughs> spent most of his life looking for Bigfoot. <laughs> In 1994, he stumbled upon some Bigfoot tracks while he's. While he was making cast of footprints, he captured eight minutes of Bigfoot video. It was also of the creature walking away with a glance back at the filmmaker. Hmm. So that's the that's the video that we all see, right? This is a different that's, video. That's, that's the new. Video this is uh, Paul Freeman captured. Paul Freeman yeah. captured that. Okay. This was captured in the Blue Mountain region. Uh, so Blue Mountain, Georgia area. Or uh, probably Blue Mountain, Virginia, Virginia, uh, Virginia, Virginia okay. maybe a little bit in Georgia. Okay, yeah. 
Take me home. So Paul follows the Bigfoot into the woods where he spots him again with a smaller Bigfoot. It is believed Paul's maybe the smaller Bigfoot was the female. Maybe. Or vice versa. I think it was a kid Bigfoot. It was a kid Bigfoot? Foot. Yeah. So you can find this footage on YouTube. Whoa. So now we have. No, that was the, the Land of the Lost guy. The Land of the Lost yeah. guy. Will Which Ferrell? Is, no. What was his name? Chaka Shaka. Well, I don't remember. You don't remember that? In no. Land of the Lost? No. The little caveman ape little guy they had? No, I don't Shaka, that. Chaka or something. <laughs> yeah, Land yeah. of the Lost. I Land remember the, Will Ferrell getting either you Peter what, barfed on, and that was you it. You don't remember the lot when we were when we were kids? We used to watch that show. I never watched that show. You never watched the no. Land of the Lost? Mm-hmm. It's a good show. It's on Saturday mornings. <laughs> it was like a, it might be on <laughs> YouTube. Okay, so um, with a smaller Bigfoot, it's believed that Paul's footage is real. And he never profited from it. That's why they believe it's real because he didn't. He never profited from it. He never, he never sold he, it he wanted used money. it for money. He's yeah. just he filmed it, and you know this is back before YouTube was popular, so or even existed. So, but what he, did he? As far as Freeman, do we know that maybe he just did basically like put it out there, and then he got maybe fame off of it, but we don't know. If he was never paid for it, right? Just fame in the Bigfoot yeah. community, but not, not in that. It, 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 looks, it is pretty convincing. Like I said, it's on YouTube. You can see it, yeah. and he's the the film shows him on the ground looking at the tracks, and then he looks up, and then you just, of course, you just see the glance of it. But it's, it's enough true. to recognize it's some sort of ape thing. thing. And he freaks out. That's pretty. That's pretty. And he's like, I. He doesn't exactly know what to do, mm-hmm. and it it goes off, and then he decides, well, I'm going to go and try to see what more I can see because it didn't attack me. So, but it, it takes him a good few moments before he decides what to do. So he, he does seem spooked. Spooked by it. It doesn't so, seem acted. So it acts like, like no script, not scripted or anything. That's no. pretty, that's, yeah, that's no. pretty. I don't know if I still believe it, but <clears throat> yeah. So in 2000, the Skookum cast was discovered. It is thought to be the best piece of physical evidence of Bigfoot. The popular Australian program, Animal Acts, just started to film its second season. They sent a crew to look for Bigfoot in the, the Gifford Pinochet uh, National Forest. If I pronounce that wrong, I'm sorry, because I don't know who that is. I don't know either. The team consisted of an anthropologist, a marine biologist, a journalist, an exotic animal handler, and a healthcare administrator. They spent six days uh, combing the forest using fruit as a bait in mud pits to try in order to get a good print. Um, on the seventh day, they got a print, which they quickly cast and brought to scientific experts. These experts believe the cast to show an anatomo- anatomical features representing to an eight or to nine foot tall humanoid creature. Details of the cast showed dermal ridges, which only primates are known to have. It did not match any known primates. Unknown hairs were also collected from the cast. Now, this is not... A print of its foot is believed that the Bigfoot lied on its side to collect the feet, reaching under, reaching into the mud. So the Socum cast, uh, so the Socum cast is of its thigh, ankle, forearm, and hip. Skeptics, however, believe the imprint to be made of nothing more than elk. The team believes that this is not to be an elk because no hoof marks were found. So what they're saying is that the the Bigfoot was intelligent enough to reach. Reach to grab the fruit, but not to put itself into the mud, so you couldn't get its its footprint. So it just knows it's being hunted. Yeah, basically. Which I can believe that if it's real and it's interact, it's Wait. interacted with man as much as we think it has, then it knows. So, so I'm asking that it was a question trap. to you now. Do you think Sylvester Stallone has met Bigfoot? Hence, why he wrote Rambo. No, what happened in Rambo? That he ran around the woods, hiding, stalking, hiding from people, so he couldn't get caught. Oh, so you think he got his inspiration from Bigfoot? Yeah, he very well could have. Could have. It's been so long since I've seen Rambo. (laughs) Like what? So the cast is impressive because it's not just his foot; it's it's actually his side, basically. And they are right. There was no. If it was actually an elk, you would see the elk. The elk wouldn't have been as smart as the Bigfoot. It It would have just just walked up, and you would have got hoof prints, but they never did. In 2006, Dr. Jeffrey Meldrum, an associate professor of anatomy, 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 anatomy of bodies and anthropology at Idaho State. I can say anthropology, but I cannot say anatomy. At Idaho State University, published a book titled Sasquatch Legend Meets Science. Meldrum also happens to be an expert on foot 
morphology, <laughs> studying the movement of monkeys and apes. Meldrum was, was shown casts of Bigfoot footprints. They were 14 inches long and suggested running motion. Some even had skin whorls. Meldrum stated that it would be very hard to fake the running motion of these casts. As of 2006, no Bigfoot DNA has been able to be identified. However, there are 15 samples of other animal DNA that has not been identified to any other animal. So he is kind of right. I mean, you kind of picture that cartoon of, you know, a guy with uh, a Bigfoot on a stick mm-hmm. trying to make it run. That's what I envision. Yeah. Am I the only one? You can say I'm the only one. No, I, I, I did talk about happen. Bigfoot boobs. <laughs> yeah, we haven't seen those. <laughs> and the, no point. I have no shame in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, in 2007, Rick Jacobs captured two pictures of Bigfoot in the Allegheny Forest in Pennsylvania. He originally was tracking deer with a Bushnell camera. At first, you see the bear cubs walking past the camera, sniffing the deer bait and mineral block left by Rick. Soon, an unidentified animal is seen in the picture. The camera has a 30-second delay per shot, so it only managed to get two shots of the creature. Some experts say it's nothing more than a mangy bear. Have you ever seen a mangy bear? Yeah, I thought this was weird when I read it too, but actually, that's uh, that's actually a type of bear. A mangy bear? Yeah. It looks like... Uh, is, it like is his hair like knotted? Does he have dreadlocks? Kind of. It looks like a less hairy, <laughs> less hairy bear. A less hairy bear? Yeah. It's, it's, it's like, weird looking. So basically he's sick. <laughs> Yeah, it's like he looks like he's sick. Yeah. Like, he like, he's sick. like what a mangy dog would look like. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So the other experts say that due to the ratio of the limbs to the creature, it's a primar- primate in some sort. So there we go. Yeah, and the that... front is the front legs were longer than the back legs. Okay. Oh, okay. So but still possibly, could, okay. possibly could be. Also in 2007, a Baylor re- religion, was religion? religion religion survey. Uh, found that only 16% of Americans said that Bigfoot absolutely or probably exist, with 44% responding, probably not, and about 40% saying that they absolutely do not exist. In contrast, over twice as many people believe in ghosts or astrology. I do want Bigfoot to exist. Ever since the $6 million man fought Bigfoot, he got uh, smacked around too. But he got yeah. That, that it was, was a, a close yeah, battle. That was pretty, but... <laughs> all his all his like gadgets were showing. Yeah, like his, his, his that mechanical. Was, that was his toughest fight yeah, ever. That was a, it was even when he fought the other guy. Remember that one guy that's always the bad guy. In no, movies? I don't remember that. He fought. He was another bionic man that he fought. No, oh, really, he fought another. He bionic fought another man? bionic man. Somebody made him, and it was just. I remember having. You remember? Did you ever have that doll? The bionic man. Yeah, yeah. You could I look through his eyeball. Yeah, and you could pull his arm, and it had like the. Yeah, it had the skin you could roll down. Yeah, it had yeah. The gadgets like in there. And it stuff. was like foreskin. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so in 2008, two researchers from Atlanta paid a large sum of money for a frozen Bigfoot carcass from Rick Dwyer, who owned a Bigfoot tour company, and his friend Matthew Witten. The carcass actually turned out to be a gorilla, gorilla suit. Yes, I remember this making the news because this Me made too. national headlines. And really, like, if you're Rick and his buddy there, you, you don't think they're going to melt the damn thing yeah. and realize it's a suit? Yeah, it's stupid. Well, how did the, do you reckon there was a contract there where they said, "Look, we'll send it to you, no questions asked. You got to pay the money, though." Yeah, it was a big deal. Yeah, I remember it being when I was in college, being like, "Uh huh, well, okay." So, if you are ever confronted by a Bigfoot, offering it food gives you an eighty percent chance. Oh, sorry, offering it food gives you an eighty percent chance of escaping. It's the same with us. If you offer us food, yeah. you can leave. Well, ninety-five percent. <laughs> uh, crying, on the other hand, will provoke the Bigfoot to punch you in the face. That's like you. You get the same yeah. reaction when people cry. <laughs> yes, I get really angry. Like, stop <laughs> crying. Uh, Todd Standing has footage of himself being attacked by a Bigfoot with a giant four hundred pound logs. And boulders being thrown at him. Is that the guy with the car? He like smashed him up and dragged him into the forest, and then Bigfoot trounced his car as well. I don't know. I think it might be. I did see the the footage of the logs being thrown, but that's all you really see. Yeah, you only see that. You see them being launched. I've seen that too. Yeah. Uh, Willow Creek, California, is considered the Bigfoot capital of the world, which is obviously they claim that, but lots of other places do too. Uh, drawing in Sasquatches and Bigfoot enthusiasts is enthusiasts worldwide. Six Rivers Forest is also near here, which is considered to be a Sasquatch refugee. 
Most refuge. Pro- oh, sorry. Yes. Yes, that's where they go <laughs> or to be safe. <laughs> Sasquatch <laughs> Refugee is a song by Tom Petty. <laughs> <laughs> Most primates do not believe the existence <laughs> of Bigfoot. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, primologists, uh, primatologists studies primates. If the name didn't seem clear enough, no, it doesn't because I can't pronounce it. You did. You pronounced it correct. And then the, the, the prima- very first time the, you pre- said it prima- right. Yeah, primologist and then primatologist. It's like a primavera. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's tasty. Yeah, uh, more hairy. No meat. <laughs> <laughs> Bigfoot is on the endangered species list, uh, starting in 1965 by Russia, Germany. Uh, sorry, by Russia, Germany, and France followed suit in 1966. So they claim it to be a real thing, but the U.S. doesn't. In 2012, the U.S. US also added the creature to the list, but more so because of the declining state of our forests, which is where Bigfoot, real or not, would like to make its home. Yeah, so we only declared him an endangered species so we could protect the forest. So Bigfoot protects the forests. Well, we have to protect Bigfoot to protect the forest. But we have to find Bigfoot to then have the forest to protect Bigfoot to then have the forest of Bigfoot. Something like that. Here's some Bigfoot in pop culture. Harry and the Hendersons. A Crumpets. A Crumpets? Yeah, I love Harry. That's really? A kids movie. It's been a long time since I've seen him. Yeah, that's the guy who was in... I can't think of his name now. The, the dad was the guy from Third Rock from the Sun and all those. Oh, John Lithgow. Yeah, he was good. It's a movie that was done in 1987 and a TV show in 1991 to 1993, which I didn't know they did a no, TV no, show. No, The Hendersons were a typical sitcom family living in the Pacific Northwest who owned an unusual pet, a real-life Sasquatch. While on a camping trip, the Hendersons found Bigfoot and brought him back to their house to live with them. Problems ensue while trying to repair the damage caused by Harry's curious nature and while trying to keep his existence a secret. The movie starred John Lithgow, as we said, and this is interesting, was it was produced by Steven Spielberg, although he wasn't credited. Hmm. Finding Bigfoot is a TV show uh, from 2011 till now. Matt Moneymaker, found, founder of the Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization, BFRO, and a team of the BFRO's top investigators travel North America and the world to search for the mysterious creature called Bigfoot. Then in 2012, the Bigfoot TV movie. 1970s pop culture icons Danny Buddit... Buddit... What's his (laughs) name? Buddalci? Buddutz? Buddutci. Buddutci. That's it. Danny Buddutci. Partridge Family and Barry Williams from the Brady Bunch face off in the hunt for legendary mountain creature, which is something I would think I would watch. I would watch that movie. I'll tell you one of the things that's not mentioned in here that's really cool is that I mean, how about the beef jerky commercials, Jack Links? Yeah, I mean those are really those are pretty. I mean, it would be kind of hard nowadays because with the way technology is, if mm-hmm. you put him out there now, mm-hmm. things are so developed right now, you would believe it. I yeah, mean, he's believable in that TV, in that show, in yeah, that, in that commercial. So if you were to see that running around the woods, you would you would definitely have to capture it. What's the Jack Links though? That's like don't mess with Sasquatch. Don't or mess with Sasquatch. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so well, a Bigfoot horror camp in 2017, <laughs> a TV movie when when uh, an unknown beast begins to harass the nudist colony Bruce. out in the desert. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, there we go. The the Fed sent in their lead Bigfoot expert to solve the case. Shrouded in mystery for hundreds of years, Bigfoot is believed to be the missing link between man and beast. Can his existence be proved once and for all? I would also watch that. Yeah, I would watch that. I would. <laughs> Discovering Bigfoot 2017 video. Discovering Bigfoot is the first feature film documentary with a real live interaction between a Bigfoot creature. Wilderness experts, PhD, and other world renowned, 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 renowned. experts, mm-hmm. experts and researchers journey into the heart of Sasquatch country with Todd Standing, who appeared with Survivor Man's Les Stroud in Survivor Man Bigfoot. A lot of surviving going on there. Yeah, so it's like, surviving. There's <laughs> <laughs> like two TV shows merging yeah, into exactly, one. Yeah, exactly, right? Experienced three incredible days in the field with Bigfoot researchers. Todd Standing and renowned expert professor Dr. Jeff Meldrum as they encounter a real-life Sasquatch. What we think we know of think of knowing of human origins and evolution is about to change forever as we discover the truth about a species 
that has remained elusive by outwitting and evading modern man for decades despite its best efforts. New evidence is revealed through scientific, systematic, and logical processes proving the existence of the Sasquatch species. Modern-day descendants of the Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the Gianna Ficusus, <laughs> A.K. Bigfoot. <laughs> Gianna yes, yeah, ja- yes, and which I do remember Gigi. that because that was real. Yeah, that thing that it's a it's a prehistoric. I did see that. Okay, yeah, so that that giant Gificus, whatever it is, <laughs> <laughs> the giant Gificus, Gificus, Gificus. Um, the unprecedented feature film includes never before seen extraordinary Sasquatch footage that will shock the world. A terrifying altercation between Todd Standing and three Sasquatch creatures in the wild. It says five never before seen video encounters with the Sasquatch species and an overview of life and death struggle that was necessary to acquire them. It says you will feel fair. <laughs> <laughs> now I want to watch that. Yes. I want my bad. Yeah, I'm going to go home and. Watch that one. Uh, so another one was uh, Killing Bigfoot, which would be really sad. A one-hour TV special. An ex-pro wrestler and a Vietnam vet are on the hunt for Bigfoot. Entering the forest at night, the two men and a team of parliamentary men brandishing assault weapons are intent on killing Bigfoot. What did he do wrong? Why are they just going to kill him? Because. Because he stole someone's cheese. Uh, they're determined to prove the rest of the world, the scientific community, that Bigfoot is real. By killing him. Yes, by, by killing him, not capturing him. This puts them at odds with uh, many in the Bigfoot community who do not want to see one dead and claim they have the DNA which proves it is human and not a kind of ape. Killing one would therefore be murder. Blah, blah, blah. Their Gulf Coast Bigfoot organization, the GC Bro. Uh, is a group of hardcore. GC bro, it's GC a GC bro. bro. It's a, yeah, they're like the LMFAO, and then the ones from earlier on. Uh, it's, a, it's a group of hardcore woodsmen with a military and security background who are dedicated to the task of bagging a Bigfoot. I said bagging, not why banging. Would they, why would you want to kill him? Uh, the use of military-style stealth operation in a hunt with assault weapons and live ammo. There are men of action who are pausing to turn the page, uh, convinced that what they're seeing is is real. Um, it would be the same as big game hunters. Yeah. Why do you kill a rhino? That's very true. Why do you kill an elephant? They they know that only a body of the Bigfoot will convince authorities that the creature is really out there. Killing Bigfoot will capture the unusual lives of these men on a quest to find and shoot the giant-like, ape-like animal stalking the Gulf Coast area of the southern United States. So, the next one, though, is $10 million baby Bigfoot bounty. <laughs> no. What? It's a ten, <laughs> yeah. a $10 million Bigfoot bounty. I want to watch this one. Yes. The 2014 TV show, nine teams of big game hunters and Sasquatch hunters are instructed to find proof of Bigfoot. A uh, homin- hominoid-esque figure reportedly seen in the wilderness. Each episode, of the teams are given a specific challenge and one team will be eliminated. In each episode, the teams if the teams manage to find evidence to prove the existence of Bigfoot, they will be awarded $10 million. However, the proof must stand up to scientific testing in order for the team to receive their money. If no conclusive evidence is found, the teams will be eliminated until only one remains, at which point the uh, team will receive... A hundred thousand dollars. So basically, the show never gives money out. No, no. Well, they give a they give a hundred thousand. They give a hundred thousand. You can yeah. all come when the, you might win one percent. Yes. Finally, in an Entertainment Weekly article, as if you need any more proof of Bigfoot's <laughs> existence, <laughs> Rob Lowe claims it was spotted Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a, the article as it was published. The actor told Entertainment Weekly that he came across a mysterious creature while filming the, his new A&E series, The Low Files. The docuseries follows Lowe and his sons as they explore the Ozark Mountains, which stretches between Arkansas, Missouri, and Oklahoma in search of the wood ape. A wood ape is a local vernacular for Sasquatch or Bigfoot, Lowe explained. He and his sons went camping in a scene that is featured in the show's season finale. Lowe said they encountered a real live wood ape. 
We had an encounter. We had an incredible encounter with what locals call the Wood Ape, which is in the Ozark Mountains. He claimed, "I'm fully aware that I sound like a crazy Hollywood kook right now." No, Rob, that's not why you sound like a Hollywood crazy kook. It could be everything else you've done. <laughs> Lowe said the encounter was terrifying. I was lying on the ground thinking I was going to be killed. He recalled. Lowe also said he believes in ghosts. So now, on that evidence, do you think Bigfoot is real? I don't believe he's real only because of the whole camera thing. At some point, we've had to have a clear shot of this damn thing. For myself, it, there's he's got. They have to die. Yeah, there's and you got to be skeletal yeah. remains. Somewhere. Exactly. So that that's my that's the only reason why I can't believe it is because of that. The f- the footage and the clear thing. I can understand people being nervous. I mean, I can't even get a selfie of myself to clear. But, yeah. <laughs> but, but it's like, but. I think it's I think the evidence of not having the bones and not having the yeah. skeletal remains. Yeah, and I don't buy yeah. the they bury them because all the photos of the solitary the animals are solitary creatures well, in myth. So well, even if they, another bigfoot comes upon a dead book bigfoot and buries it by yeah. happenstance, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't I don't think that. And then and then I mean I we could find prehistoric dinosaurs in ground. Yep, yeah, yeah, found one. Yeah, except so. for. Giant fucking fuck of Vegas. Whatever his name was. <laughs> <laughs> he was real. <laughs> All right. So, um, oh, wait. What about you? Me? Ah, no. It's a no. You didn't but, weigh in. No. But, like, I don't think so. I kind of. I want it to be real. Yeah. I still want it to be real. You know, it's one of the ones where you're like, I don't believe, but if it comes real, I'm going to be so happy. Yeah. Um, I want all those things to be real. Yeah. Loch Ness, dragons. Yes. Yeah. It'd be so cool, but. Yeah. I, I, I think if, if, if he was real, it would be. It would be like a freak show. I think. Oh it would yeah, be, it would be. It would be. Yeah. Like a, it'd be one of those. And the ones person that found him would just be riches galore. Yeah, it'd be I like mean, it the King be. Kong story, just smaller. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It would be without Jack Black. <laughs> <laughs> All right then. So on to the beer. Back to the Cronenberg. I need some ratings. Chris, get the label rating out of six. Uh, one. Yep, it's a boring label. <laughs> it is a really boring label. But it's a beautiful bottle. It's a vase. Yes. I'm, I definitely value the bottle more than the taste, probably. But yeah. if I'm not a bear trick, and the wife can enjoy the flowers in there. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I think. So. so as a non-bear drinker, what would you give it Like as a just a taste? As a non-bear drinker, I, I it had a different kind of taste than I'm normally would. I, I would probably give it like a three and a half. Oh, yeah. Wow, really? Yeah, I mean cuz I I I usually can't stomach it at all. Yeah. And I really I really wasn't that bad for a light for, yeah. for being light it wasn't that bad. And that's the, I think the joy why again I chose it. It's it's one of my, actually my favorite all day beers. Yeah. So this is it was a 6 for me and it's a cheat from that regard cuz I've had it before but Yeah. Being told as a non real non beer drinker, it's kind of like one to throw out to so try and try, and it's like it is what a really easy drink, and yeah. it's not got that, that, that overpowering, and it doesn't have the stanky Bud Light taste. It just has a that's it has, what it was, yeah. there, was, there wasn't the aftertaste to it that yeah. I normally get from it. So that that's probably first. So for from a beginner's point of view, I would say that was a nice light yep start starter beer for yourself. Yeah. I'm gonna give it a five. It didn't get a, a six for me because it doesn't have enough flavor, but it's still very good. Yeah. You uh, could drink this all day. Oh, yeah, you could. And yeah. I definitely have done many a times, so it's all good. <laughs> um, all right. We have some emails over here. I'm going to play the ro- role of Nicole. Um, we have an email from Brett. If you were to, uh, sorry, If you were to be a champion in a trivia contest, what subject would you win it? Would win it? Well, ah. What subject would you win in? For example, mine would be country music. Well, mine definitely wouldn't be country uh, music. So, Mark, I was you, asking, what are you an expert yeah. in? I think. Well, I could tell you what Chris would be. Well, I don't even know. His boobs. If he could notice a, a Sasquatch, <laughs> Squatch, Squatch had boobs. <laughs> animal boobs. I can tell animal boobs. boobs from yes. Elvis Presley's <laughs> or not. There's like, there's no doubt. Yeah, I was trying to think more pop culture. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I think animal boobs for Chris DeVos. <laughs> <laughs> um, that sounds really creepy. <laughs> What would I be? What would I don't think I'm a master of any particular subject. Like, I could hold my own in Star Wars trivia, but, like, Faraz would kill me. Yeah. Um, I think I could hold my own in zombie trivia, but I know there's people that would still kill me in that. Maybe, I think I could probably get away with, like, maybe George Lucas films. Lucas and Spielberg combinations. 
So Star Wars, like Indiana Jones, Back to the Future, kind of that kind of topic, I'd be all right in. I think 80s alternative music would be where I would most shine. Most shine? Yeah, I, I would have to, I, I would chalk myself up for probably a core some kind of horror movies. Horror, yeah. just horror yeah, in general. general. Horror in general, probably more to the zombie genre. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think that's I a can, big subject. Yeah, I, I that's really a big topic. Yeah, I really think that I can. I think I can hold my own in that. I mean, I've, I whether no matter what it was, I watch it. Yeah, even if from the worst thing. I mean, I watched that train to Busan. I really was. Uh, I watched it, that. That was good. It was decent. It really? was a really decent movie. It was decent. It wasn't. Yeah, you know, I've seen worse. <laughs> That's pretty. No, it's a tough one because again, you've yeah. there's people that are passionate about things and take things to extreme levels. Where I have a love for a lot of things, so I don't think I can. I'm a master of one. Yeah, I'm, I, there's too much that I'm interested in, and I don't pay too. I don't pay enough attention to get all the specifics of and everything. I like to dibble and dabble and yeah. stuff. So mm-hmm. it's kind of like I know a little bit about this, a lot about this, a little bit. Of, yeah, and it's kind of so I can't really pinpoint it to one thing. But if, if jack I had of all to, trades, yeah. But it, but but it would be the zombie. Genre that yeah. just that probably gets me going the most. So we have a second email from Al. Uh, so far, my favorite episode has been on Tim Curry. Good job, guys and gals. I'm putting in a request to cover the story of Carol Burnett. Not really a question, more of a request. Chris, can we do Carol Burnett? I would love to do Carol Burnett. Who is Carol Burnett? Tell me. You don't know who Carol Burnett? Is? Oh my gosh, you have you know who Carol Burnett is. Well, am I just being Com- very comedian? She's yeah. Well, she was mentioned in the Tim Curry. I know, but now I'm thinking I'm drawing a blank. She had her own TV show. Mm-hmm. Carol Burnett show. It's her and Tim Conway and uh, Harvey Corman, and they did skits. Oh yeah. But um, family friendly, but hilarious. You now you have to go watch Carol okay. Burnett. Show. I've got some she, homework. She was like a like a Lucille Ball of yeah, her, you know they, they yeah. that same kind of category with yeah you know, she was she had that same kind of comedic. I think she was an innovator too. I think she was like one of the first female hosts of that kind of genre because yeah. it was mostly men. Yeah, and she and she was the first. Yeah, she was the first mm-hmm. person to really have her own show that. That starred, yeah, where well, she men. was a yeah, host. That, that came and, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was. Yeah, so she was. She was. She was pretty, uh, pretty powerful for her. For, you know, for her, for her time. Yeah, she's awesome. So yes, we will Carol Burnett you at some point in the distant future. <laughs> it was the answer to the question. Um, what else have we got to tell you? Do you have any other movies besides Harry? I'm, I'm, I am gonna. You want to do Black Panther? Yeah, I'm gonna be the only person in the world that didn't like Black Panther. I haven't seen it yet. So without any spoilers, because there's a lot, a lot of talking. Uh, very beautiful movie. And if you've seen The Lion King, you've seen Black Panther. Really? Yeah. There's a Timon and Pumbaa in it? Yeah. Wow. Um, there's, it was, I mean, they did a great job of like the the visuals, story. The acting was great. Um, the chick who plays Masham in The Michelle. Walking Dead, she is just, she's phenomenal in everything she does. She, she's she's really such a good, strong female lead. Mm-hmm. And she was, again, amazing in this. Um, Ten times better with the dreads. Yeah. And, um, I mean, she's got to keep the dreads on. <laughs> but they, again, it just kind of, for me, it was, it was, I'm not a big Black Panther fan, full mm-hmm. stop. Like, I, I knew who the character was, but the development was there and needed if we could do one. But for me, it was also like, this is just keeps dragging our feet. We're going to keep dragging it just to put a little bit more and a little bit more in, um, which I feel there's a lot of movies that have gone that way of late. I knew who he was when I was a kid. I mean, he was like, he was not, he was in the, yeah, the, of the, the, the Hall of Justice and one of them, but he never really was. If I mean, we're doing like a black superhero and we're giving him his own movie, I don't understand why they didn't do Luke Cage as a movie. Yeah, and this was, again, that made more sense. He's way more yeah. popular. Yeah, that would, have been, that would have been a good choice. And that's what JL, was. we actually saw it the same night in the same theater, not with each other, because that was when we bumped into each other. And um, we, he had seen it a couple of times. He loves it, but then just said Luke Cage would have been 10 times better. Yeah, he was a much bigger superhero. Black Panther was around, but... Wasn't he was like in a background superhero? He's yeah. like the last yeah. comic like book you bought when you what's the other read everybody the else. Black Vulcan. Uh, the, the Black Falcon. Vulcan. Black Vulcan, he's the same thing. He's a superhero. He's, but he's the same kind of. No, I don't know him. And um, yeah, the, um, the the whole thing they're saying is going to lead up to the Infinity Wars. But overall, I, I've seen it all before. There was nothing. It, Thor was so much better. The last Thor movie was for me millions of times better. I finally so, saw that. It was great. Yeah, and it's just from that to go to black. Honestly, I was bored. So it needed more Jeff Goldblum though. Well, you know, <laughs> you've only got six weeks to go, Chris, and you'll get yeah. some Jeff Goldblum. Is he in Infinity War? 
No, no, he's coming to town. Oh, yeah, that's right. He's coming to MegaCon. We're, I keep we're, forgetting. We're going to go and see Jeff Goldblum at Meg- MegaCon. And so we'll go there. Life soon. will find a way. Yep, it will. So Black Panther, uh, going to be Generous 5. A Generous 5 crumpet. Yes, out of 12. Know. I have a 12 crumpet rating, but 5 out of 12. So, I mean, I just, yeah. Yeah, we've got 6, but so we kind of saying uh, wait for DVD. I would, or, or, or but sure. like honestly, oh, like, man, I, 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 honestly, <laughs> you're showing your age. Yeah, sorry. What's our DVD? Yeah. I am. Um, yeah, I just I would watch it again to maybe give it a second chance, but not. It didn't wow me. Where Thor, I went. This is awesome. I could watch yeah. this like ten times and laugh. Where it did have some good moments, and Martin Freeman did a great job as the token white guy in it. And um, did it you was, say Morgan Freeman? Martin Freeman, the guy oh, okay. who, uh, who played. I got uh, confused. <laughs> yes, I know Morgan Freeman is a hell of an actor, but he played a token white guy. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, again, just yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, uh, but I have to make a lot of awkward faces in life. Hence, why I posted the meme in our 870 members strong group on Facebook. I know that's crazy. We are growing. We are growing a massive growth of 50 people a week at the moment. Yeah. So thank you. Keep adding people in. Well, I think that's it. Yeah, well, guys, thank you for letting me uh, be a part of this. No, no problem. Yeah, yes, welcome awesome. to the process. Thank you. Thank you. So, is, you got to see behind the curtain. Yeah, this is... Uh, Which, very, if you notice, there's no curtain. So. There's no <laughs> curtain, no. So they actually lay the curtain out for a long time. Everyone can see behind the curtain while we do when you listen. Little tiny room that has bars on it. <laughs> and they said, listen, we're shorthanded. You're helping today. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> So let's do the plugs. You can find us on all the podcast stuff that you find everybody else on. Uh, give us a listen on Spreaker because guess what? That's free for you and we get paid. Yay, money. We like money. You can join that Facebook group that James mentioned growing all the time. Really fun. Lots of memes. Lots of jokes. Uh, not a lot of political stuff. So we try to keep it light and fun there. Lots of promotion. You can buy our merchandise in there too. Yay. We what got- am I forgetting? Um, email us. Oh yeah, email us at where the podcast forty two show at gmail oh, dot com email address. Oh, you know what I forgot? What I forgot? What Nicole's so proud of? Saying hi to her mom. No, well you did well, forget hi, that. But uh, about the Facebook group. Oh yes, go on, Chris. <laughs> no, you you have it. to. No, you do it. So no, you do it. So, uh, no, you do it. Uh, okay. No, you do it. I'll do so, it. No, you do no, it. No, we're gonna. We're we'll you do it do, Okay. When Are you join the, the Facebook group, group it will ask you a question. question. Where did, did you find us? us? You I'm can really... mention this show. <laughs> <laughs> but you, we didn't say it in the park enough. You can mention this show. Or you can say you found us under a rock or chasing Bigfoot. That would be a great response. I cannot be as perky as her. Um, I'm yet to see any of these responses. <laughs> so one day I'm going to see all 870 responses of how you joined our group. So yeah. I was Especially forced to join. The one that says, oh, I found you at the ATM. <laughs> <laughs> that was me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. If you find random business cards, let us know why you find them. I might give you a prize. There you go. Free sticker. All right. Well, that's it. I'm Christopher DeVos. I'm James Duncan. And I'm Mark DeSenti. That was foot. my big foot. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. 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 You are no longer listening to Podcast 42. Some of the stuff you just heard might have been embellished, made up, or just plain incorrect. In other words, don't use this show to write a book report with. You will get a bad grade. Just like all the hosts. But I'm not done yet! JL's Beer Cooler is written and performed by Cremo. Cremo is an award-winning actor and musician. For all things Cremo, including more great music... Visit Cremo.com. That's spelled C-R-A-Y-M-O. He is on Twitter at Cremo. Facebook, just search Cremo Music. And also on YouTube under, you guessed it, Cremo.